so I, it, I'm trying to cram everything in that I can because my next opportunity for having a talk is until March. So, um, it's really looking at how travel has changed because of the pandemic and um, just a little bit of an education on what the trends are and how, you know, best tips for trying to organise your dream holiday and, and whether it's your dream holiday or just the holiday you fancy doing next year and beyond. Um, so let's just move on. First of all, in 2019, so just last year, tourism was worth $1.7 trillion, according to the World Travel Organization. Uh, sorry, the World Tourism Organization. This year, in 2020, look what's happened. 120 million job losses in the travel industry. So against that decimation, there have been some trends and changes in how people are viewing travel going forward. Uh, so I'm just going to talk through a couple of the, the trends that we're seeing in terms of post-pandemic travel. First of all, bad news in a way, but not necessarily. Travel will become more expensive, but in a way that should make you more choosy about getting the holiday, getting the travel that you really want to do instead of just sort of looking at a couple of things online and just booking it there and then. Why will it be more expensive? The airlines have been forced to ground practically all of their flights this year. The hotels have had to close in peak seasons, um, especially over the summer, but we're coming into more closures over the winter season and a really decimated ski season. So, um, you know, real commiserations to those small towns and villages whose livelihoods really depend on the, the ski seasons. Health and sanitation measures that people have had to impose or, or put into place have been expensive. So there will be um, an increase to the cost and there's less availability because the airlines are downsizing in terms of the number of flights available. But against this background, people will be taking longer more experiential adventures. What do I mean by that? Instead of the fly and flop, just sort of fly, get your transfer, get to your hotel, sit there with a cocktail by the beach and spend the whole time bedding out, people are looking for experiential adventures where they can actually go on excursions, have experiences, interact with the culture, learn a bit more about the country that they're going to. Um, and a lot of these are, you know, first time visits to, to destinations that people haven't really thought of going to before. People will be going to more remote and isolated locations. So people will be traveling further rather than just the, the local um, European resorts. Um, this is something that we're seeing more and more um, coming up as we book um, ahead even into 22 and 23. 2022-23. They're looking for places like South America, Patagonia and the Maldives. Places where you can socially distance naturally. These are the sort of countries and locations, for example, the Maldives, where you really are pretty isolated and you're not coming into contact with many people. It's an added bonus. And people are looking at ways they can avoid people um, and be just with their family in their social bubble. So people are looking more at villas rather than hotel rooms. They're looking at luxury apartments and custom group tours. So where you would have a small group tour previously, um, obviously they still exist and they're very popular, but you can adapt these and have your own family or your own bubble as that whole group. Um, and customise a tour around it. They are really no more expensive um, and people might sort of think that sounds really extortionately um, priced, but it's not. Um, it's actually a very good value for money way of travelling on these group tours. All right. There are so many types of holiday and what I want to really um, emphasise today is that when you're thinking about your holiday, Think about what's really important to you. 
think about what you want out of the holiday. Don't just go for the normal sort of, oh, this is what I, well, it may be what you want, the sort of fly and flop type. Um, but what are your interests? Are you into music? Are you into wine? There are lots of vineyard touring holidays, South Africa, New Zealand. You could take a boat through Bordeaux and uh, hire a boat along the canals and uh, enjoy the vineyards of Bordeaux. Are you into music? Andre Rio, do you want to see an opera in Rome, ballet in St. Petersburg? K-pop's really popular and going to see the K-drama locations in Korea at the moment. Um, there's some fabulous trips that cover Elvis, Memphis, New Orleans and Nashville. What sort of things do you like? Are you into wildlife, birds, safaris, whale watching and so forth? There are city breaks, retreats, adventure holidays and the experiential ones that I was explaining. And of course the bucket list. If Covid has told us anything, it's really taught us that we need to get on and do the stuff that we were um, dreaming of doing but never got round to do. So think about those bucket list holidays. Multi-centre holidays are really, really popular at the moment where um, you can, I can sort of craft together exactly what you feel like doing. So we can have, say, a week on safari or even four or five days on safari and the rest of your two week break on a beach. Um, you can have um, part of the time in the city. Uh, when I went to Thailand, I did partly Bangkok. Then I did a, a small group tour for a few days in northern Thailand, which was absolutely fantastic. And then came back to um, a small island and a bit, did a beach holiday. It felt like I'd been away for ages. It was absolutely brilliant. When I came back, I was kind of riding a high. So multi-centre holidays really make you feel like you've been somewhere and enjoyed yourself and just got away from everything. How do you want to get there? There are rail holidays, drive or no fly options, cruises, which again, cruises can be um, your sort of high de high type 2 -E cruise, or it can be way up to the Regent Seven Seas type cruise, uh, depending on what it is that you're after. River cruises are getting really popular. Sailing, island hopping, skiing, obviously. And where do you want to be? Mountains, lakes and rivers, on the beach, a desert. Antarctica is the largest desert in the world, by the way. Um, jungles. Go, go and see the Amazon. Gorges, there are some fabulous gorges in China. Uh, polar trips, the Arctic for your um, northern lights, for Lapland, uh, for igloo experiences, ice hotel, and of course the Antarctic on the other side. Or particular landmarks and geological wonders that you've never got round to going to see, perhaps the, the pyramids in Egypt or, or Petra in Jordan. So think carefully about what you'd really like to do, where you'd really like to go and how you'd like to get there. So coming, moving on then to tips, I would say look carefully at offers. Um, sometimes you'll see an offer online where um, it sounds like a great deal. It might be just too good to be true because you might find that it's a cheap price because it's going from, I don't know, uh, some airport that you can't get to or it's going um, during the hurricane season. Um, it's, it's, there's usually a reason why an offer seems too good to be true. So check with your travel agent, you know, this looks great, but you know, is it a good time to go? And, um, and we'll let you know. Book ahead, don't leave it to the last minute. This year, last minute was a good thing. Going ahead, it's not going to be. The availability is low. We can book, in some cases, we can even book flights up to two years ahead, even though they're out of date range. Um, some companies, some suppliers that we have on the trade side will guarantee prices. Customise. You don't have to do the, the, the jet to holiday where you just go with hordes of other people and you do the same thing. You might like this hotel, but in that place or this this particular type of hotel, but you don't <coughs> that one. You like the pool from that one. You like the restaurant availability in the other one. So we can customize these things. We can add on a little um, excursion. We can include a, um, a visit to, to the local city or town. There's all sorts of things that we can do in terms of customization. 
excursions and tickets for um, events that are taking place out there before you go so you know that you've reassured of those tickets. The tips at the moment are that um, terms and conditions are much more flexible than they have ever been. There are lots of lots of companies who are saying that the um, that rebooking or cancellation is going to be amendment fee free. Um, so that you know there there is lots of flexibility out there now. So that should inspire confidence to book ahead. And of course, book with an ABTA bonded travel agent who can offer at all protection. Why? Well, there's a thing called the Package Travel and Linked Travel Arrangements Regulations 2018. And under that regulation, you have different kinds of protection depending on whether it's a package holiday or a linked travel arrangement. A package holiday is one where the supplier is the same for the accommodation and the um the the transportation and you have a package together from one supplier <clears throat> now that's something that a travel agent will do for you a linked travel arrangement is where you you find say the booking.com online and you get your hotel and then you sort of look and you think oh they've they've sort of suddenly popped up uh, do you want a flight with this and you get a flight that's a linked travel arrangement you have much less protection you have financial protection only um, covering the arranging company. So if your airline goes into liquidation, if something happens other than to the arranging company, you're not covered and you'll have to be um, dealing with the airlines and the, um, the outfall of, of, or the fallout of what's um, happened if something goes wrong. Um, and things do still go wrong. A lot of things don't, but things do still go wrong. So atoll protection is what you really should be looking for. How's COVID and Brexit affected things? Well, going forward, it's likely that we will need a vaccine, um, a bit like the yellow fever certificate that we used to have to have, um, that there will be a need to show that you've had a vaccine. This morning, I don't know whether you heard, uh, the Pfizer vaccine has been passed um, as um, fit to use. And I think in um, next week they are rolling it out. So that's been great news from this morning. There's social distancing going on in um, various destinations, in all destinations. And so that makes um, has an impact on the capacity. So hotels are not able to um, operate at full capacity because of the social distancing and the sanitation measures that they have around. Um, and they have been working hard over the summer to make sure that they comply um, in all sorts of destinations. And many governments around the world have insisted on hotels measuring up to a specific regulation for the sanitation measures. Make sure to check the FCDO travel advice. Um, it does change. It's not all about COVID. There are other reasons. For example, I think today the Germany travel <coughs> advice changed because it looks as if there was an incident where a car has run into a group of people. So it's not all about um, just COVID. So do check the travel advice regularly, not just once, because it does change. Make sure you're covered with travel insurance and make sure, and, and hopping up, up off to the Brexit side as well, make sure your travel insurance covers health cover because your EHIC card won't work. Um, after 31st of December this year, you will not be covered for um, pre-existing conditions, which you were covered for under the EHIC arrangements. Um, look at, again with COVID, look at the entry requirements. Some countries are um, requiring quarantine. Uh, some countries are requiring a test before you travel. But these things will change moving forward. And I'm sure by spring, a lot of those will have gone um, because the vaccine will be available. And again, you know, think about whether you need to quarantine when you return. Those are things for short term measures going forward to the end of next year and, and beyond. Those things hopefully will be a thing of the past. Brexit, you can't use the pet passports anymore. If you travel with your animals, you are going to need to uh, check with a vet at least four months beforehand. Your passport, uh, passport control, you'll be in longer queues. You will no longer be able to go through the EU channels. Uh, there may be entry requirements or visas imposed. At the moment for tourists, for the vast majority of Europe, that's not the case. 
but they can um, arbitrarily put these conditions on to us now. So do check that there are no entry requirements as a tourist or if you're going on business. You may also need to show that you have sufficient funds and a return ticket, which is something we've not had to do before if we've been going to the EU. And if you're driving, you will need an international driving permit and a green card. So those are the things that will be changing as a result of COVID and Brexit. So in summary, consider the trends and how travel is changing. More remote, isolated and long distance travel. Choose your type of travel. How do you want to go? Rail, uh, no fly options or flying. Uh, what sort of um, holiday do you really want? Keep those tips in mind, especially the COVID and Brexit ones, and book it with an Avita bonded travel agent, please. That's all from me.